Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N R. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our second day in the third part on the series of basic math. We just, yesterday we began the third part of the series from day number 201 through 300 series of basic math and today is our second lesson on the topic of Venn diagram second lesson in the series of 15 the problem as you can see is already on the blackboard let's take a look at it shall we we are told that we have a group of 450 students we have 450 students we are told that 30 percent of them study math 20 percent study chemistry and 10 percent study both 30% study math, 20% study chemistry, 10% study both. The question simply is how many of these students study only math, only chemistry, and neither? Let's take a look. Let's, let's see what we can do, shall we? Let's take a look. Well, we are told that 30% study both. So here's our Venn diagram. Math. 30% we are told is study math. We just put down 30, forget about the percentage chunk right now. Let's pretend that there are 100 people. We'll keep it simple. We are told that 20 of 20 of them study chemistry. 20 of them study chemistry. We are further told that 10 of them study both. 10 of them study both. Well, as soon as we put a 10, as soon as we put any number in the common area, these 10 people that we put here who study both, these 10 people are first count it as a part of these 30 people who study math. Out of these 30 people, out of these 30 people, 10 of them also happen to study chemistry. They study both. Which means, again one more time, out of these 30 people, these 10 people also study chemistry. Which means there are only 20 people who study who study only math. There are 30 people. That is true. It is true that 30 people study math. It is true that 30 people study math out of 100, but out of those 30, 20 of them study just math. The other 10 also happen to study chemistry. Similarly, as soon as you put a 10 here, we have to go back and adjust this figure. There are 20 people who study chemistry, but half of those people also happen to study math. In other words, there are only 10 people who study chemistry, but not math. They do study chemistry, but they don't study math. And the other 10 people out of these 20 study both. That's it, we are done. How many study only math? Only math is right here is 20%, 20% of 450, we know, we know 10%, we know 10% of 450 is 45, if 10% is 45, 20% is going to be, 20% is going to be 90. So how many study only math? The answer is 90. How many study only chemistry? Chemistry is 10%, 10%, 10% of 450 is going to be 45. So that's, those two questions are done now. We have to move on and answer the question neither. How many of them study neither? But that's a little tricky one. Here we have 10 people, 10, these 10 people here. Let's erase the percentages one more time so we can deal in, well, these are percentages, these are actual numbers, okay? So now I'm going back and forth. Sometimes I'm pretending there are 100 people at the end. At, at, the, at the very end of the questions, we cannot continue to pretend that there are 100 people. There are 450 people. So before we can answer the questions, we have to switch. We have to figure out 20% of 450. We have to figure out 10% of 450. But anyway, assuming there are out of 100 people, out of 100 people, not assuming out of 100 people, out of 100 people, there, there is no assumption here. Out of, one, out of every 100 people, we have 20 who study only, only math. Which is why we have 90 here, 20%, 20% of 450 is 90. We have further 10 people who study only chemistry, 10% is 45. We also have 10 people who study both. When we add up these figures, we get 40. What does this 40 represent? This 40 represents the number of people, number of people, this 40 represents the number of people out of 100 who study either math or chemistry or both. These 40 people you see, 10, 20 plus 10 is 30, 30 plus 10 is 40. 
out of these 40 people study either math, just the math, or just the chemistry, or both. Well, if that adds up to 40 and there are all together 100 people, because we're doing it out of 100, and we're dealing with percentages out of 100, what about the other 60 people? Out of 100 people, 40 of them study either math or chemistry, or they happen to study both. Well, what about the other 60 people? Well, that implies, this in turn implies, therefore, that there must be 60 people, there must be 60 people who study, 60 who study neither. They study neither. That's your idea, 60%. 60%, 60 percent. 60 percent, 60 percent of 450 is six out of six times four, six times 45, because 10 percent is 45, so it's six times 45. I don't know what six times 45 is. Let's let's convert this into three times, three times 90. Six times six times 45 should be the same as three times 90 because I doubled the 45 and I take half of three, half of six. And then I do know, 3 nines are 27, so it's 270, neither. Let me erase this chemistry part so we have some room here. So the answer is 270 people, and this is chemistry. You want to do one more? Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. Give me a second. Here's the next one. We did a survey and we found out total of 250 people were surveyed. We found out that out of those 200, 250 people, 190 190, we are told, they have been to China. 190 people out of those 250 people told us that they have traveled to they have traveled to China. They have been to China. 150 people out of this 250 told us that they have been to India. They have been to India. Uh, exactly 100 people out of this 250 told us that they have been to. They have traveled to both India and China. Here's the question. If we were to pick one, pe one person at random, if we were, if were, if we were to pick one person at random out of these 250 people, What are the odds that the person chosen, the person chosen, the person that we happen to choose at random, or person picked, has been to number one China? but not India. What are the odds that if you were to pick one person at random that that person has been to China but not India? In other words, what are the odds that that person that we picked at random has been to China alone, only China? Number two, what are the odds that the person picked at random has been to India but not China? In other words, that person has been, has, has been to India alone, only India. And finally, what are the odds the person has been to neither China nor India. And we're being asked this thing, we've been asked to express this thing as probability, as odds, as chances. Let's get going, shall we? Let's get going. Here's our Venn diagram. We have 250 total, that's important to keep in mind. 190 have been to China. So here's our China, here's our India, here is our China, here is our India, 190 people. It's not actually a bad idea to pause the video right now and do it yourself. I, I forget to remind you sometimes, but even if I forget to remind you, you should do this thing instinctively. You should do this as a habit. As soon as I finish setting up the problem, 
do it yourself. There is your chance. Pause the video and do it yourself and then compare your work against the work that you and I are about to do in a couple of seconds time. Okay? Okay, here we go. 150 people we are told have been to India. We are further told that 100 people have been to both of these countries. 100 people have been to both of these countries. So far so good. These 100 people who have been to both China and India, these 100 people are first counted out of this 190 as the people who have been to China. But we can't double count them, can we? We cannot count them here and count them here also. So as soon as we put 100 here, we have to go back and switch this to 90. Subtract 100 from it. In other words, out of these 250 people, 90 have been to China but not India. 90 of them have been to China but not India. There is your first question. They have been to China but not India. Here is the, here's the first one. China but not India which is going to be 90 out of 250. As I told you, it is expressed in terms of percentages So because we are asked. So instead of wasting, instead of wasting your time dealing with this thing here, here is the trick. If you can convert if you, can, if, you can, if you can convert the denominator into a hundred or some multiple of hundred, hundred or a thousand or ten thousand, any multiple of hundred or something as close to hundred as possible, as quickly as possible, then that's what you should do instead of wasting your time with this fraction here. Let's multiply top and bottom by four. As soon as you multiply top and bottom by four, nine times four is thirty-six, so it's three hundred and sixty over one thousand. That's it, you're done. What are the odds that person that picked at random has been to China? But not India, the answer is 36%. Let's do the next one, shall we? Let's do the next one. Where can we do the next one? Let's do it here. Again, as soon as we put a hundred here in the common area, we have to go back and adjust this figure. I should have done this thing a long time ago because there is a chance otherwise you might forget. Out of these 100 people, out of these 100 people, 100 of them have also been to China. Out of these 100 people who have been to India, there are 100 people, they have also been to China. But we cannot double count them, they cannot count those 100 people here as the people who have been to China and here as the people who have been to India. We are double counting them. We have to go back and adjust this figure. In other words, there are 50 people who have been to India but not China. That's your second part. They have been to India, 50 such people out of 250. But this is very, that's very easy. It's just one fifth. 5 divided by 25 is one fifth, which is 20%. So that's it. Now let's do the neither part. Let's do the neither part and I need the room. Where can we do it? Let's do it up here. You're going to need the figure here, so we have to keep the figure. So 90 people, there are 90 people who have been to only China. There are 50 people who have been to only to India. This is China. And there are 100 people who have been to both. Let's add them up. 90 plus 50 is 140. 140 plus 100 is 240. It's 240, but we know that we had a total of 250 people in our survey. If we surveyed 250 people and 240, this 240 represents the number of people, number of people who have been to India or China or both. They have been to either India or China or both. 240 people out of the 250 people. What about the other 10 people? Well, that's your answer. There you go. How many have been to neither? The answer is 10 out of 250. 10 out of 250. Again, instead of worrying about 1 25th, which is actually very easy, 1 25th is 4%. But here's another way. Multiply top and bottom by 4 as before, and we end up with 40 over 1000. 0 drops out, and you end up with 4 over 100, which is 4%. I hope that a second ago I said 4% and not 40%. You see, 1 out, one out of 25, we could have done it here, 10, 10, 10 over 25, 10 over, 10 over 250 rather, you can cross out the zero, divide top and bottom by ten, and we end up with one out of one over twenty-five, multiply top and bottom by four, which you end up with four over one hundred. Four over one hundred is four percent. So we could have gone that route, or we could have gone that route, or we could have simply recognized that one out of twenty-five is the same as four out of hundred. The chances are only four four percent. 
almost everybody in the survey, almost everybody, 240 people out of those 250, virtually everybody, only 10 people have not been to either of these countries, which works out to be 4%. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.